How is my pretty plum cake? Yeah, Evu. Jimmy, we can't. You have chosen the best available. Thank you for the compliment, Mr. Fox. Trot. Our parents were dead, beyond the reach of appeal or reason. This is father's way of revenge. It's simply his wish. Emily, you will let me have them. Often it seemed as if my sisters were my children. Ireland is prospering, but all our tax ends up in London. Why must he concern himself with matters he barely understands? I'm making a protest. Why can't he simply enjoy being rich? Don't say you're hurt. I'd die on the spot if you're hurt. Oh, Tom. Marriage agrees with you? It's not at all alarming. One would think you had been married for years, not days. Someday I may have a lover, too. And Jemmy had petitioned the king to keep Irish taxes for Ireland. On his return from London, he received a hero's welcome. I failed. I did not even get to see the king. You are the only one who tried, my lord. Look, my lord. They struck a medal in your name. You may not be valued in London, but it's a different matter here. I had already displeased my sister Caroline by marrying Louisa in Ireland. Sarah was now of marriageable age, and I could not refuse Caroline's wish to launch her in London. I will miss you. I will miss this place. You'll be so occupied, you won't have time to think. I will not know anyone. I'm not good at dancing. I'm not as pretty as Louisa. You will not know what to say. Nonsense. I worry I will disappoint you. You will not disappoint me. It's your first season, of course you worry. Did you? I was used to London. And you will soon become so. Lady Sarah Lennox. My dear Sarah. Sister, let me look at you. You are not quite as I remember you. I'm not. No. But every bit is pretty. Now, first of all, you must meet everybody, and then we will plan. You will find yourself busy, Lady Sarah. Mr. Fox? You will enjoy London. Oh, I do hope so. So much diversion all in one place. Yes. So much amusement. So many young men. <laughs> well, I do not know if the young men will like me. Oh. <laughs> I must introduce you to our sons. Your nephews. Boys, this is your aunt Sarah. I'm Stephen Fox. But you may call me Stee. Were you here last night? No. I thought you weren't. I would have seen you if you were. I'm Charles James, ready to serve you in any way you wish. Come, Sarah. I'd like you to meet uh, Lady Darlington, my sister. Perhaps I should have insisted she remained with me in Ireland. She was so innocent. Delighted. We must have a ball. Do you dance? 
I should take dancing lessons. My feet are too big. Oh. <laughs> well, Catini teaches dancing three guineas a month and tolerably dear, but then he is the best. Can you sing? Or can you ride? I can act. Oh, excellent. Lady Susan. My niece, Lady Susan Fox Strangways. Lady Sarah Lennox. Lady Sarah has a taste for theatricals. Oh, you must take a part in our play. The Bow Stratagem. I'm sure you know it. We have the most delightful leading man. Well, she's pretty enough, but well, she has no air. She'll do well. She has charm. I was a considering in what manner I should make love to you. Love? To me? Friend? Yes, child. Child? Manners? If you were to keep a little more distance, friend, it would become you much better. Distance? Good night, sauce box. I hope so. You ain't affronted. It's death, child. You have a delicate pair of eyes. <laughs> Mr. O'Brien is very handsome. I love him. You love an actor? I cannot help it. I adore him. <laughs> then what would people say? Sarah, my dear, your brother wishes to congratulate you. Your Grace. Surprising performance. Congratulations. I hope it entertained you, brother. <laughs> A promising start. You'll improve with practice. My wife, Mary. Your Grace, did you enjoy being seduced? In the play? I trust it only happened in the play. Oh, of course. Though he's handsome enough to tempt a nun. Ah, oh, Lady Sarah. You are Lady Sarah, the sister from Ireland? Yes. Horace Walpole. Mr. Walpole is the very celebrated man of letters. And this, Lady Sarah, is George Selwyn. Did you see the execution today, George? I missed it. You watch executions? Everyone has a hobby. I suppose they do. Mr. Selwyn is quite taken by death. I noticed you sleeping in the commons again today. Well, mind you, I woke to vote. <laughs> If one spends one's nights in reverie, one must sleep sometime. <laughs> Marchioness of Aberdeen and Lady Ishbel Gordon. Thank you, good fortune. Lady Sarah Clifford and Miss Susan Beer. Thank you, good fortune. Lady Jane Cottrell Dormer and Miss Clementia Cottrell Dormer. You there. With the hair. Lady Sarah Lennox, Majesty. L Lady Sarah, you, you... We knew you before. You were the child who sang in the jar. You sang what song? I cannot remember. Oh! What was it? What? Can you sing it now? Will Your Majesty excuse me? I believe I have forgotten the words. By God, you made us laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I often make people laugh. I do it without even trying. Oh! <laughs> uh, the Prince of Wales would like to talk to you. Will you indulge the young pup? I don't promise entertainment. He never has much to say. Her Grace, the Duchess of Northumberland, 
and Lady Elizabeth Percy. Thank you. Good fortune. Lady McCartney. You have lived with Lady Kildare in Ireland. Was it good or was it dull? It was a pleasure. Do you have company over there? Frequently. And what do you do when there's none? When we are alone, we read. Aloud? Sometimes. My sister Kildare often has trouble with her eyes. You don't find it tiresome to read aloud? No. I would do anything for her. Her kindness to me is such that I could never describe it. You are obliged to her, as I am obliged to Lord Butte. He's my only friend. He guides my path. I see. I need an advisor. It's hard to be prince. There's your other sister. I'll talk to her. Lady Caroline, I've just spoken with Lady Sarah. She's everything lovely, don't you think? Indeed, Your Royal Highness. Listen to this. The Royal Moon Calf has found a planet to adore. Lady S came from Ireland and fractured his intractable heart. She's not Irish. She was born here. What does he feel for her? What have you seen? Are you serious, Charles? I mean, would you have her marry him? Of course he would. We all would. For her to marry the future king would be of advantage to all of us. Not least to you. Me? It might help restore the family's honour. Honour? What are you saying? Only that you are accused of profiting by the war. Your Grace, everyone profited by the war. Including you. The coal royalties filled your coffers. That is legitimate. That's the bounty of the king. Yet I am accused. You have questions to answer. There's talk of embezzlement, bribery, fraud. It's well known. I defy anyone to prove that I have in any way... Proof? Who needs proof? Look how your fortune has expanded. You buy houses and lands. <laughs> you pay his gambling debts. I'm renowned for my gambling debts. Shh. My life. My fortune. My affair. Sums have passed through your hands for which there are no accounts. Can you refute that? I did what everyone does. So you cannot account for the amounts that... How dare you question my conduct? I have exhausted myself in the service of the king. I have seen lesser men flourish in ease and plenty. Not one or two, but many. My abilities, my goodwill, my whole self has been devoted to my friends and country. Why should my family not benefit? Let those who judge me look to themselves. I will not be judged. My brother, the Duke of Richmond, was right. Mr. Fox's political fortunes were in decline. He had amassed great wealth, but he had one ambition left. He hoped for an earldom, and a royal alliance would help him secure one. You like Corelli? Yes, Your Highness. It uplifts the soul. Yes, Your Highness. I know you feel it. I do. Mm -hmm. I'd be happy to listen for hours. That is what we do, Your Highness. We listen for hours. Your eyes. Your Highness? Wide eyes are not usually pretty, but yours are fine. Thank you, Your Highness. 
do others tell you your eyes are nice? Gentlemen sometimes pay compliments. Do they? Who? I cannot remember. I suppose there are dozens in love with you. I don't think there's even one. Some men are good at compliments. It doesn't mean to say they feel more. I'm sure you're right. Well, one who is silent might boil with passion within. <laughs> if your highness will allow me, there are others you should speak with. Will you excuse me, Lady Sarah? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, my dear Sarah, you look beautiful. Oh, the sweetest rose in the depth of winter. Rather say a briar. Have you thorns, Lady Sarah? Only in my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> and will His Royal Highness be there tonight? I have not inquired. Have you read of her conquest? Mm hmm. It seems that everyone has. More's the pity. Lord Sal, don't hide your light. I'm not a beacon. Don't bristle at me. You make me believe I strike home. Can we talk of another subject? Come, sister, we must go. Young ladies will have their secrets. If they do, they are cleverer than me. It seems that everyone knows everything about my life more than I do myself. Never mind, Lady Sarah. We who live on gossip love those who provide it. <laughs> Is that what I am? An entertaining story. Must I try to keep you amused? You need do nothing more than enjoy the ball. I shall. Good night. Sarah is showing some promise, don't you think? If I'd launched Louisa, I would have chosen a better husband than Mr. Connolly. I mean, wealth isn't everything. We must ensure the best possible match for Sarah. Are we right? to hope that the prince... We shouldn't move too fast. We must be circumspect. Marriage to a future king is not simply a matter of falling in love. We should send her away for a time. You know what absence does to the heart. My brother and the Duchess are going to the country soon. Yes, we'll send her to the country. The plan to enrapture the king still further received something of a setback when Sarah fell from her horse and injured her leg. But the clever Mr. Fox knew well enough how to turn such a mishap to account. I wish I had a heart for the music, but all I can think on is Lady Sarah's accident. Accident? You haven't heard that she went to the country and fell from her horse. A fall? How dreadful. Is she seriously hurt? The pain was severe, but her courage, Your Highness, I'm told it was admirable. For goodness sake, how is she? Her ankle is broken. No small thing for a young lady. Thank God she lives. When they carried her home, the pain was extreme. I feel for her intensely. May I inform her of your concern? I should be deeply indebted. There is no pain. It was not broken. Such a relief. A limp would have quite spoiled your chances. Are you pleased? She can go dancing again. Not immediately, I'm afraid. Well, the doctors assure me. We won't be dancing. Your Grace. 
His Majesty is dead. Dead? The King? I expect he was as surprised as you. It appears he had breakfast as usual and breakfasted well. He retired, as he usually does. While sitting engaged in a natural function, he suffered a seizure and died. <laughs> he had an affection for you. He thought of me as a plaything. For a king, he had no conversation. A king needs merely to play the king, my dear sister. And we, his loyal subjects? It is not the person, it is the office. I'm surprised you don't see it. Bespeak your mourning. You'd change your ideas if you were queen. The thought of being queen makes me quite sick. Sarah, I am sure it will be. And you must be ready. When he proposes. He will not. I am certain of it. That's excellent. You must seem to be surprised. I will not have to seem. I will be quite astonished. Try muttering a little, as if quite overcome. Muttering? So astonished, so surprised, can't understand. What is your meaning? I do not understand why you persuade me to this. You'll thank us yet. A chance such as this. How can you miss out? Sister, you do not think he will propose? Well, they say he admires your rural simplicity. Rural simplicity. Sarah's admirer was now the king. Naturally, we were all captivated by the thought that our sister might one day be queen. How could we discourage so advantageous a match? You cannot make hay. It doesn't matter in the least. The, the look is the thing. Not come this way today. Well, then you can be here tomorrow. Pull up your sleeves, show your arms. Mayhap she ought to show more neck. This is an absurdity. Someone's approaching. It may be him. The accession of King George III reunited the family at last, as we assembled in London with the rest of the nobility. Mr. Thomas Connolly and Lady Louisa Connolly. I would not have Louisa know it for the world, but I was quite taken aback when I met her little spouse. I think she says, if I were Louisa, I would be vastly embarrassed. Oh, she adores him. Was my bow all right? Perfect, my little fleek. I practice the correct angle between the trunk and the thigh. He falls into a terror. If her little finger aches, he is so impulsive, I worry. Always oh, married to Louisa. You need have no fears. And Lady Elizabeth Foster. The Duke and Duchess of Richmond. Signor and Signora della Saviglia. Do not break the word to Caroline, but I believe Steve is most obnoxious. The poor boy is often ill. I think it makes him peevish. Peevish? He drinks and he gambles. I believe he even has debt. I like his brother, though. He has wit. <laughs> There's a word for this, Louisa. What is it? Lord and Lady Barclay. Resplendent. Oh, that's the one. What a wonderfully resplendent occasion it is, hmm? Sir Roger <laughs> Henry is not well. His political misfortunes have weakened him. He grows listless, not at all himself. 
do these hopes of Sarah, not she? Well, fortunately they do, but how will he be if they fail? Louisa, do you believe one should marry without love? I believe it is better to be in love. You are right. <laughs> but one does not always have such good fortune. What should one do when one is without love? I believe I would be guided by the family. get out of this room. He has told me. He says he would like an English queen. I am surprised. I am astonished. Do I understand? What is your meaning? He said you were the fittest for the part. Why tell you and not me? He thinks I can influence you. You can. You do. Then do as I say. Say yes. Do not leave me alone. I'm sorry. I obey the royal command. Lady Sarah, we trust we find you well? Yes, Your Majesty. Has Lady Susan told you what I said? She has, Your Majesty. We want you to ever remember that you hold the most passionate attachment of our heart. Your Majesty, I am surprised. You should not be. Has not our preference for your company been marked? I, I admit. Has not our happiness been evident when we see you? I do not like to assume it myself, but my friend assures me. I was ignorant of passion before I met you. Since then, I have known both misery and joy. Joy when I'm with you. And grief when we part. Your Majesty. Even though I am king and have responsibilities, I still have a heart. That heart was unlocked by you. I do not know what to say. Believe that we tell you the truth, Lady Sarah. And for God's sake, never forget. He will. At a meeting of the Privy Council, listen, at a meeting of the Privy Council, the announcement will be made. What announcement? The King is to marry with Charlotte of Mecklenburg Strelitz. What? No, he can't. Who is this Charlotte of Mecklenburg? She's German, 17. Suitable and squat. Every time he looks at her face, he'll think of yours and bitterly repent. I do not wish him to repent. He may be king, but he must look to his conscience. His behaviour was appalling. His behaviour? Mine? I do not love him. I never will. You must think me such a fool. Sarah. We were foolish to have hoped. Presumption had blinded us. Sarah herself felt tainted and humiliated. She had become an embarrassment. We were all mightily relieved when she married Mr. Charles Bunbury even though he was a man of no great distinction or fortune. 
Emily would have come if she could. She sends you her best love. Don't give in to melancholy, sis. My sisters are all happy in marriage. I hope I will be also. Think him suited, sister. Well, he has neither eyes nor ears for anyone but her. Two thousand pounds a year, a house in the country, and a house in town. They haven't an income for town. She'll be bored out of her mind without the diversions of London. Why should she choose Bunbury? He is a scholar and a poet. Mm. I hope I'm wrong, but he looks like a coxcomb. Tom. My dear Sarah, God send you all happiness. Choose to walk. My dog of a horse is lame. Did you have good sport? Tolerable. Do you wish to know how I spent my day? What did you do? I talked to my parrot. I sewed a handkerchief. I wrote to my sisters. And I looked out for you. Is that not a day well spent? Glad it amused you. Because it must. Everyone else seems sure it should. Do you wish me to invite some friends to visit? Whatever you wish. I'm going to London. Don't you want me to come with you? Do you want to? I'm surprised you can ask. You must come, if you please. Do I follow you about too much? No. Some men find it tiresome. I'm not blaming you if it made you angry. Is Mr. Connolly coming to London with your sister? Yes. They arrive from Ireland next week. Arrange to meet them. Certainly. I need his advice on a horse. A horse? Now, only my youngest sister, Cecilia, remained in my care in Ireland. I still had my own children to cheer me, apart from William and my beloved George, my eldest, who were being educated in England. Would you like George to get married? Cecilia, I would much rather he were here. Edward, let Sophia have a turn. <laughs> Where are you going? I have an engagement. We see little of each other. This is a complaint, my lady. Of course not. I'm perfectly happy and extremely lucky. George became ill with a consumptive fever while he was staying with my brother in London. Sarah, ever caring of others, went there to nurse him. And such is their beneficence to those below them that there is not a neighbour, a friend or a servant who does not bless the day when Mr Jones was married to his Sophia. Happy endings. My favourite kind. What did the doctor say, George? I must take bark. A quantity of bark. You should write to Mother. She will love to hear from her favourite. Rather, she has no favourite.
Should I go home? Certainly you should. As the new heir, your duties require it. How shall I tell Mother? I will go with you. And Mr. Bunbury? Jemmy and I had been elevated to a duchy. We were now the Duke and Duchess of Leinster. Our delight at our new title was to be short-lived. I think Carton looks prettiest in the morning. Perhaps a few more trees. You have a good eye for landscape. Ash and elm. I'll have them planted. <laughs> good showy trees. Fill up a few holes. Or a lake. I can have the river stop to make a pretty sort of lake. Or to look mighty pleasing, Your Grace. Oh, forgive me, Tom. I'm not yet accustomed to the title. <laughs> First Duke and Duchess of Leinster, you should be damned proud. I am. You might say it is the only favour the King has done me. <laughs> <laughs> is that Sarah? Mothers expect to bear the loss of a baby. Why did God have to take the child that was grown? Monsieur Rousseau. Monsieur Rousseau. After George died, I resolved that I would no longer lose any of my children to England. I would keep them with me. Come, children. I would keep them safe. Do not disobey. Return to Barton soon, Sarah. Mr. Bunbury does not urge me to return. You show such consideration. But he must pine for you and you for him. Do you not think our sister needs me? She has me. Yes, I know, Cecilia. And indeed, you are a treasure. She would want you to do what's right. I'm going to ask Monsieur Russo to teach the children. Jemmy has bought a house by the sea. It will be a school. Do you think he'll come to Ireland? Why should he come? He's had to flee from Paris. He has such interesting thoughts on education. It appears he does not favour children studying books. In books, I die. Where is he now? In Dosh. You will set everyone talking. I'm writing to him now. I wish I knew what to do about it. There's no harm in William. No harm and no sense. He has never been bookish. His schooling was a waste. Maybe Europe will improve him.
They never grow accustomed to leaving home. What does he look like? This Rousseau. Jimmy, how should I know? What do people say? Nobody calls him handsome. I'm not convinced he's a good idea. It's too late to change. The letter is sent. Jimmy. I know you will like him. Why do you worry? Mr. Fox? I live an easy life. You have left politics behind. Yes. You have done well. When I thought of my own advancement, I did well. When I did what I believed in, I made mistakes. The summit eluded me. My sister is not sorry. She sees more of you. I made money, Sal, which will make my family secure. It is the sovereignty of Parliament that I uphold. Charles James will fill the place that I aspired to. People vilify you. Does that not anger you? One must learn to ignore. In the meantime, I am content. Beshrew me, but I love her heartily. For she is wise, if I may judge of her. And she is fair, if mine eyes be true. And she is true, as she has proved herself. And therefore... He's mine. Like I've herself, his heart. Wise, fair, and true, shall she be placed in my constant soul. Your niece Susan has ruined herself. Oh. By marrying that actor. When? Yesterday at Covent Garden. The coffee houses are full of it and the papers are sure to follow. Do you think Sarah knew? Well, no idea. I feared her influence on Sarah, but I never dreamed she would destroy herself. What will you do, Henry? Do? What? Could you find this... O'Brien, some employ somewhere. Where? But they can't stay here, Henry. The scandal will dog them. Maybe we could send them to Ireland. Well, I doubt Leinster will receive them. He declares that what is unacceptable in London is equally amiss in Dublin. Well, where then? Henry! Sarah's name will be dragged through the papers again. You must send them abroad. I will see what I can do. Oh. We should send Sarah away too. I was asked yesterday if I was inclined to elope with an actor, or if I still pined after the king. And what did you say? I said nothing. Well, it doesn't matter what you say. They'll make it up anyway. There's Susan. Now, just a quick goodbye. Don't take too long. I'll see you by the steps. I forbid you to be sad. I do not believe you will miss me in the least. One can still write letters, even to America. You will tell me everything. Every little detail. What we grow, what animals we rear. Animals? On the farm Mr Fox has given us. We will make our fortune. I'm to go to Paris with my brother. Paris will lift your spirits. I'm pursued and talked about everywhere here. 
because I'm your friend, it does not mean that I'm to blame. It's all just jealousy of your pretty face. If the king had never noticed me, none of this would have happened. You have the best heart of anyone I know. I only wish everyone else thought as you do. Promise you won't forget me. How could I? Freed from the restraints of London society, my sister seemed determined to flaunt the failure of her marriage. You wager like a French woman, sir. We are in France. So tonight. It used to be the French. You do not gamble in England? We do. But many think it a vice. Mm -hmm. For a woman to gamble, it is frowned upon. Oh. You are faint hearted, Your Grace. Do not trust your luck. It seems you trust yours. Does not the excitement lie in the risk? C'est fini? Oui. Merci. A pity. It was a trifle. It was a sizable sum. I do not count the cost. Bravo! There is no dishonor in using. It is proof that one has risked all. You would be proud of me. Your nephew? My sister Caroline's son, Charles James Fox. Ah, the parliamentarian. The gambler. He supports the power of parliament over that of your king. This I admire. I am a passionate supporter of the English constitution. All my life I have loved your country. You have been there? It is my intention. Take care. You may find yourself disappointed. <laughs> I find most things improve on acquaintance. I found the opposite. Your husband has retired for the night? He is readily bored. Oh. You will permit me to visit you when I come to England? You may visit my brother. I would not expect of him what I hope for from you. I wager you. I shall not disappoint. 